Hi folks, welcome to Honest Car Views and I am your host Eric of course and I'm driving on some twisty roads in Malaga where I'm test driving the new Ford Puma, the B segment small size crossover of Ford. It's a hybrid and the car that I'm driving is the 125 horsepower Puma which means that it's the base model however it is the hybrid so it's not the cheapest Puma that you can get. That's the standard non-hybrid Puma with 125 horsepower. I am in Malaga. Ford was kind enough to fly me to Malaga to chest drive this car. I'm very grateful. And what is my thoughts about the Puma? With two days to get my senses on and to drive as much as possible, I have done some conclusions and we can start with the exterior of the car. That's the first thing you see. The car looks juvenile. It looks quirky. It's made, it's obviously made for the younger generation. And the exterior, the front side of the car has the same front lights as the old Ford Puma from the 90s which has the front lights more on top of the front rather than in front in the middle of the front so to speak if that makes sense I hope it does and continuing with the exterior the rear taillights looks like they're directly borrowed from the Renault Capture and Cadillac and if you google a picture of those cars and compare it to the new Ford Puma rear, you won't be able to unsee it. Sorry guys. The car that I drove was in red, the one that you see I'm driving right now. However, there is an ST line Ford Puma as well and that was blue and that model um, removes the gray colored lower plastic parts of the car and you get body color uh, parts at the lower parts of the car and it looks in general more nicer and more sophisticated not as rugged uh, getting into the car you find a new generation for the interior it is very dark however it is a completely fine true and tested interior which means that it will hold them uh, they have gone through the kinks and I be truly believe that this interior will hold for a long time one thing that I found really outdated though was the infotainment system which is the latest generation of sync however that generation is not new enough it is fast however it looks dated very squarish very boring in general which is completely different compared to the new digital gauge cluster you heard it right you have a digital gauge cluster which changes depending on which mode you are in sport normal mode echo slippery and trail it all changes, white, red, blue, depending, I mean, red more fiery, blue more normal, green more echo. You get the deal. The seats, comfortable, and they are in very basic textile fabric. As well on the sides, you get some Bang & Olufsen sound system, which I have listened to before and I listened in this car. Bang & Olufsen does a tremendous job with the sound system. It is an up, uh, upgrade, but if I were you, I would spend those money. Going to the rear uh, passengers, you, I am 187 and I do not ex actually fit. Because the exterior design slopes downwards towards the rear instead of being flat, the, my uh, leg space was completely adequate and I was really happy for that going to the rear luggage they have created a mega box which means that they have literally just relocated the exhaust they relocated the gas tank to just fit a, a storage compartment the size of a big box which means that you fit a lot of extra stuff 
because it goes deep, you can store your golf clubs vertically instead of horizontally. And you fit, uh, it actually has a drainage uh, hole, so you can just flush that thing down with water and just open up the drainage hole and you have a clean mega box again. So the interior exterior done. What about the driving dynamics? It's a hybrid after all. And the hybrid means that you have a 1.0 liter three cylinder engine from the Fiesta ST or the regular Fiesta and you have an electric engine. And that is purely made to help you when driving. It will not be pure electric apart from when you're standing still. And this electric engine is there to reduce fuel consumption, of course. But in sport, it will be more aggressive and help you during to reduce turbo lag and to be just more peppy in general. The maximum amount of uh, horsepower that you get in the titanium edition is 16 horsepower and 50 newton meters. Uh, so this is a mild hybrid, you do not charge the car. So the car charges itself when you release the throttle. So you won't be able to drive in pure electric. The engine and hybrid system is the, the gem of this car. I was really surprised, pleasantly surprised by how nice it is to drive. It feels at low revs like a diesel, but at higher revs it feels like ordinary petrol. So you get the best of both worlds, you get low down torque with electric engine and then you get some, some peppiness, some fun, some liveliness in the higher revs. And since it is a three cylinder engine, it sounds like a low revving six cylinder engine actually. Which is pretty neat. The driving dynamics of the car in general is mixed feelings because the springs in normal mode are way too stiff. You need to tone set the mode into slippery and then you have the sweet spots. The suspension is much more uh, calmer, much more softer, much more manageable. The car doesn't need to be sported. The car doesn't need to be sported in any shape or form, actually. But I like that Ford has done this, gone this way to make it fun to drive and have that Ford magic. You feel when you drive the car. It is the point when you where you go. It is hard enough to get you. I mean, to get some sort of enjoyment out of, out of the driving experience, which is fun for us when we drive on some twisty Malaga mountain roads. Speaking of the roads, amazing, great views, the weather wasn't that good, it was raining quite a lot actually, which was good for us to keep the speeds down and to feel the balance of the car and the tires. And the car is very very manageable and easy to read, easy to drive and I never felt unsafe when I drove it on some more, what can I say, wet roads. So what are my final conclusions for the Ford Puma? Well, I do like the car, however I do like the car with the 125 horsepower hybrid engine. It is economically more economical than buying the more expensive 155 horsepower engine and I do like the exterior even though it's more juvenile I'm younger so maybe that's the reason for that but it's an all-round good package and it's in many ways starts the invention of the small D segment crossover hybridization so this is the first car in that uh, segment and I think that Ford has done a great job showing what the hybridization can do in this segment regarding price reduction, regarding gas and fuel consumption. And that is a funky looking car while still being 
comfortable and functional inside.